Hi, my name is Julia, and I'm a homeschool mom of two. In this video, we will be taking a closer look at just three out of the hundreds of math lessons available for Time for Learning high schoolers. Time for Learning is a complete curriculum which combines all the steps of the learning process through interactive and engaging lessons. These lessons review previous learning and build on students' new knowledge in a way that makes learning stick. Two linear functions related to solving a linear equation. We're going to figure out the total cost of the number of children tickets and also adult tickets we're going to spend. Linear equations allows us to represent unknown numbers and solve for their values. To start, we're going to feature a lesson from our Algebra 1 course. During this lesson, students will explain the steps and solve a one variable linear equation. They are to relate linear equations to linear functions with known output values. They are to calculate unknown input using properties of equality and we will write all lessons throughout the math courses are organized in the same way they begin with a thought-provoking warm-up focused on the guiding question and feature graphic organizers along with interesting visuals to present the lesson goals time for learning lessons use a variety of styles to keep things clear and engaging like combining visuals such as graphs and charts along with actual teachers these features give the lessons personality far beyond regular textbooks. And within the instructional portions of the lessons, students are given clear definitions and explanations for the academic language they'll need to know to understand the content. One of the most helpful features of the Time for Learning lessons is that questions are presented in different ways, like multiple choice, as well as drag and drop and sorting in some cases. Use the graph to estimate the input value at which the two functions' values are equal. Then use the linear equation to solve for the x value. This keeps students engaged, and the questions are positioned throughout the instruction to check understanding as the students progress. Use the graph to determine when the two graphs have the same output or y value. Solve the equation by dividing both sides by three halves. In the Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry courses, there are engaging real-world performance tasks requiring students to put their new math knowledge to work. Let's take a look at this one, for instance, from the Algebra 1 course. Here, students will construct piecewise functions as learned in the lessons leading up to the task. For support, there are student guides for each of the performance tasks, which assist students through the steps to completing them confidently before they submit their work. Now, let's jump to another lesson. In this lesson, we're working to answer the question, how do you find the area of a regular polygon? And by now, you should be able to separate a regular polygon into congruent isosceles triangles. During this geometry lesson, students will learn how to calculate the areas of regular polygons and solve real-world problems related to those calculations. Let's talk about apothem and area. Now, on the right, I have a five-sided regular polygon, which means that all of my side lengths are congruent to each other, and the angles formed by those side lengths are also congruent to each other. Use the interactive to help derive the formula for the area of a regular polygon. All Time for Learning math courses include the tools necessary for students to succeed in the activities during which they apply what they've learned. These tools include a variety of calculators which they may refer to at any time. In the case of this geometry lesson, students may use a standard calculator or a graphing calculator. And while completing activities in this course, students also have access to a geometry handbook at all times so they can solve problems with confidence and clarity. Now for our last featured lesson, let's take a look at one from our one semester trigonometry course. This is a lesson during which students learn to identify properties of the sine function and graph sine curves. Distance that it goes before it repeats. So notice it's going up, going down, going up and when it gets to the place where it started and was going up then that's one period so the period in this case since these are labeled one and two every other one so these are 0.5 and 1.5 the period is two units whatever the units are the domain the domain is all real numbers 
At any time, the lessons within the courses may be played back for review, and once a student has already viewed the instruction, they have the ability to fast forward to the portion they would like to watch again. There is also an included feature for closed captioning. Is the distance that it goes before it repeats. So notice it's going up, going down. Time for Learning's trigonometry and pre-calculus courses include journaling opportunities like this one, which requires students to write about math content learned within the current lessons. These writing opportunities allow students to solidify their learning by thinking through the steps needed to solve math problems and writing them out. Another feature specific to trigonometry and pre-calculus is the lab lecture along with its corresponding assessment. During a lab lesson, students are given directions for how they will complete an engaging interactive math activity, which they will need to do during the lab assessment. This allows students to practice their newly acquired math skills using a hands-on approach. During completion of the lab assessment, students can review the information from the lab lecture without having to leave the assessment by clicking the View Lab button. This concludes the high school math demonstration. If you'd like to learn more about Time for Learning, please choose another subject or visit our How It Works page. Goodbye!